So what you're looking at here is a simply supported beam with only point loads and what we're required to do is to find the reaction forces and we have two reaction forces. We have one right here at RA and then we have another here at RB. So let's get into the calculation. So the system I like to use is to establish that my clockwise moments should be equal to my counterclockwise moments. So what are moments? Moments is literally just to multiply the force that we get by the perpendicular distance. And that's it. That's the only calculations we'll require to use for this question. So what that looks like. I am going to take right here at RA to be my pivot point. And I'm going to use that to calculate our moments. So the first force that I'm going to be interested in is this one right here, that five Newtons. And we can see its perpendicular distance from RA is four meters. So I'm going to do five multiplied by four. And why I'm having it on the clockwise moment side is because if my pivot point is right there at RA, then this force will be trying to do like that, trying to do clockwise rotation there. Similarly, I'm going across now to my 19 kilonewtons and I need to find that perpendicular distance. Now that value is missing, but can be found quite easily. So if you notice the full length of the beam is 20 meters, and so far we have nine meters plus four meters, which is 13 meters so far, plus another four meters, which is 17 meters. So this missing value here needs to be three meters. So that's the missing value there. So with that known value, we can go ahead and do our calculation. So then it would be just 19 multiplied by the distance now from RA, which is our four meters plus three meters. So that's 19 times seven. And again, it's on the clockwise moment side because this force will be trying to do this, trying to rotate in a clockwise motion. Moving across now to that eight kilonewtons, and again, still trying to rotate clockwise motion and its distance from RA is 16 meters. So we have eight times 16. Now, at this point, there is no other force that's trying to rotate clockwise. So we turn our attention to RB and RB will be trying to do this. It's trying to go in the opposite direction, the counterclockwise direction. So RB will be on this side of the equation and its distance from RA, its perpendicular distance is 20. So RB seems to be our unknown value in this equation. So now to find RB, let's just simplify this equation. Right here is gonna be 20 plus 19 times seven, that's gonna be 133 plus eight times 16, 128, and that's equal to RB times 20. And to expedite the process, we're just simply going to sum all of these and divide by 20 to get what RB equal. So our RB is 281 divided by 20. And 281 divided by 20 is 14.05. So that's 14.05 kilonewtons as well. Don't forget the unit. So I'll just highlight that. So now the last piece of the puzzle is to find what RA is. We don't know what RA is yet. So that's our next objective. Now, just before we calculate RA, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you find any value from it, and please share this with someone who you think might need the help. So to find RA, for RA, we're going to adopt another approach. We're going to say the sum of our vertical forces. So that's representing sum of our vertical forces. So that's our up forces should be equal to our down forces when we sum them and what that looks like. So all the forces that's going up, if we can look at this for a second, is just RB, so that's RB and RA. And the forces going down are everything else. So that's five kilonewtons, that 19 kilonewtons, and that eight kilonewtons. So let's just do those sum. So we have RA plus RB going up, 
and what's going down is the 5 kilonewtons plus the 19 kilonewtons and that 8 kilonewtons. We already know what Rb is, so we can just put that into the equation. So that's 14.05. And when we sum these up now, we should get 32. So Ra is equal to 32 minus 14.05. And our final value for Ra is 17.95 kilonewtons and what that means is our system should be in equilibrium because to check your answer one final thing how you check your answer is you can just simply add up the values that you got for ra which was your 14.05 with your 17.95 so when you add these together if they give you the same as the the sum for your forces right there then it should be in equilibrium your system should be in equilibrium it's a static system and in this case it is so that's all added up to 32 kilonewtons so we're good to go so that's it again if you've found any value from this video please like the video subscribe to the channel help me to grow this channel and reach a much wider audience to help as many people as possible and I will see you in the next video.